Um, okay, uh, yikes, ouch, uh, yeah, um, th this just dropped out of nowhere, <laughs> and seeing as you guys loved the last one so much, you did a fantastic job smashing like on it, why don't you smash like on this one as well? God, I hate myself. So for some reason, and I don't know why, but it's Matt's decision, I guess, because I gotta respect him or else I get yelled at <laughs> in the comments, Matt has released a theory on FNAF AR when literally we have nothing about it. Maybe he's gonna do something with, um, I mean, the video is titled Five Minutes at Freddy's Help Wanted, so maybe he's gonna try and link the two. It's also called FNAF is getting a reboot. So I'm not entirely sure what it means by that, but I guess we're gonna find out in this 22 minute explanation. Uh, so I guess we might as well just jump into it, get it over with. Now I glossed over it at the beginning, but again, I just want to point out this video. I did misinterpret some of Matt's information, and I'm sorry, though I did point it out several times in the comments. So uh, yeah, I am sorry, but um, there's nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. I'll try and pay better attention t uh, in this episode. <laughs> so for those for those people that did comment saying, "Hey, you know, he didn't actually say this," you may want to um, re-listen or like remake the video. I can't. All I can do right now is um, pay closer attention in this one. So again, I am sorry, and we're just gonna. That's in the past. Okay, we got a new game theory. We're just we're gonna watch this one. Okay, that's in the past. Let's watch this new one. Ready to have your mind blown by FNAF yet again? Maybe. Let's do a little trick, shall we? I'm in the process of currently downloading and installing. Boy, look at those tabs. <laughs> Brand new that annoys me so much. I'm not gonna lie. One of the FNAF games, so you all know that we're working with the blank slate here. Go to start off with FNAF World. Really underrated. FNAF World and Ultimate Custom Nights, the free one. Huzzah for not having to buy. FNAF Six as well. Like the fourth time. Let me just. Why are you buying them five times? Show you that we are working with absolutely clean and fresh copies of both these games. Open up FNAF World. Uh, the first time mm -hmm. that we open this, we should get that cutscene of the two yellow beady eyes telling yep. us that something has happened out in the world. Who was that again? Was that Baby or the Puppet? I honestly can't remember. And you can see here, literally nothing on screen, right? We okay. Three, all empty. What's this have to do with AR? Along the bottom. And that's the important point here, right? Each time you beat the game, you get a different trophy along the bottom based on what endings you got. So, okay. notice, zero trophies, zero endings, zero gameplay. Okay, so we're going to X out of that as well. Fantastic. Hopping on over to Ultimate Custom Night, there is no high scores unlocked. We okay. Power -ups that have been given Brand new start. This is the default office. Nothing, right? No creepy cutscenes of Toy Chica in her skimpy school uniform. Huh, that wasn't creepy, that was... I mean, I'm joking, no, no, no. guys. No, I'm joking. You, right? If you think back to the release of Ultimate Custom Night, we were all really excited to see who would be included in this mega list of who's who... That was Netflix. pretty fun, I'm not gonna this lie. big final game to celebrate the ending of the series... Final. ...things to the ground at the end of FNAF 6. Nine more projects. <laughs> right? Like the 70 plus versions of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Can you imagine Freddy, if Raps, Freddy, the plushies were in it? They're in practically every game. They're super important to the lore of the games. No big surprises there. But then when the roster kept expanding, you got to some weird inclusions, right? You got yourself Music Man. What are you talking about? He's awesome. Why? L Chip? Which is basically just a glorified reference to like one of his failed games before Chipper. Freddy's Strange. That was not failed. Garbage over here. Like, not people that you would immediately think of as being included in the like must have list of characters in this franchise. I think but it's pretty cool. Them all, there was one inclusion that felt the strangest of all to me. Phony. So this one right here. Old uh, consequences. consequences. From FNAF World. A character who, if you're not super familiar with that particular game, is your punishment for going too deep into the code of the game. Correct. Right? FNAF World is a video game that's aware that it's a game, right? And throughout the adventure, you repeatedly have to dive into these glitches to unlock new parts of the world. But mm -hmm. you're repeatedly warned against going more than three layers deep into those glitches, otherwise you're going to be trapped there forever. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what happens if you don't heed the warnings. Right. You wind up at Old Man Consequences Lake, trapped. What makes it so weird to see him here, though, in Ultimate Custom Night, is that FNAF World is a game that Scott has largely disowned. He's <laughs> no. And it's a game that's all 
ultimately maybe update three base is non-canon in part because of those reasons but also in part because it seems more closely tied to the book lore than it is to the game lore but now that we have i know people are mad that i kept pausing it last time but i want to talk but now that we have fnaf ar or not ar vr which is a way of that it has games in it, maybe FNAF World is canon. Is that what you're getting at, Matt? And yet, here he is, Old Man Consequences in Ultimate Custom Night, alongside characters that are definitely canonical in a game that is also canonical. Right? Correct. It has the canonical ending of William Afton suffering eternal <laughs> torment at the Help end of me. Freddy. It's almost like Scott Cawthon is telling us that Old Man Consequences is implicitly canonical. Mm. Canonical by association. So, Good old consequences. Well, there's an Easter egg in Custom Night that you've probably seen back when people were playing that game, right? You set Old Man Consequences. Yeah, to a I did this one. Level of one, and you start your night. I'm gonna turn off the fan, and I'm here. We sit. There's no <laughs> one here to attack us outside of Old Man Consequences. So, so uh, oh, and here's Pete, oh, deep. Uh, who has by proxy of doing this ruined our opportunity to unlock this Easter egg. Thanks, Stevie. Restart. We're gonna try again. You can just hold escape, Wait, Matt. Thank you. Oh, there is. Boom. Good. So now, here we go, right? We're falling, quote unquote, falling through the source code of the game. We mm -hmm. wind up here. This is old man consequences. Is he gonna talk about the background audio or just what consequences says? But here we go. We go to I don't know why I'm asking you. He gives us his line, come and sit with me a while, leave the demon to his demons, rest your soul. I remember this. We concluded in one of our past theories about Ultimate Custom Night. Oh boy. This is Old Man Consequences talking to the vengeful spirit that exists inside Golden Freddy. Trying yes. To tell him, hey dude, chill out. Hey, that's Bye Jason. Just let William Afton suffer on his own. Because if you listen to the audio that's playing in the background... Yeah, he is going to talk about the audio. definitely hear him suffering. Well, so creepy. Either his tormented screams, or you know, Scott Cawthon shouting. <laughs> now, most people seeing this Easter egg. Would be like, just imagine Scott in his in the studio. Please be quiet, doggos. Just screaming into his mic behind a fan. The fan. Oh my God, it's meant to be. No, most people seeing this Easter egg would be like, well, now what do I do? There's nothing else. Well, that's it. Restart the game. Alt F. I'm head out. And already, this would be a really cool, really elaborate Easter egg. However, for those of us who have played through and know FNAF We gotta World get World into the World lake. We should. We know that there is one final thing that you can do in this scene, right? Get into the lake. Shimmy. At the top of the lake, and you can drown yourself. Shimmy, now, shimmy, shimmy. In the game, when you did this, it would actually reveal a secret ending that is completely hidden from that game's texture file. It shows a person standing alongside two smaller... I still never figured out quite what that was. People thought it was Scott with his son, his sons. That's as much as I can make of it, right? And sure enough, you can actually do the same thing here in Ultimate Custom Night, going into the lake and drowning yourself. But it crashes the game. It ultimately crashes the game. I'm going deep into the lake. Oh, oh, I'm trapped in the water. Oh no! It's like quicksand. <laughs> it's not so much a lake as it is quicksand. But here we go. We're going down into the lake, deeper, 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 and it crashes the game. Nice right. background, Matt. <laughs> what is that? No some cells, some blueberries. There, Here's where things get crazy. Instead of me booting up Ultimate Custom Night again, we're gonna hop back over to that brand new, fresh clean. I swear to God, if there was something on FNAF World. Here we go, FNAF World. We have not played this game. No. However, and we hit start. What? Wait, okay, okay, Matt, okay. You got me here. You got me. What suddenly appeared on our menu screen? A trophy that you unlocked. They're linked! By visiting Old Man Consequences. Oh my god. Words, That's that. Okay. Games, but more okay, man. In the lore of this franchise, these two worlds are connected. Goddamn! But what does all this mean? So it is canon. Is our episode for today. Seven minutes late. God. This is something I complained about. Okay, okay. I understand people got mad when I was like, ooh, we spent six minutes explaining the books. But. Seven minutes to start that. Again, I'm not, I'm really, because I know how much you guys hate it when I get mad at Matt. But seven goddamn minutes, okay? I'm not hating. Why would I be hating? I love the man, as I've stated in 
many comments. I love him, I look up to him, but holy hell, seven goddamn minutes. Channel where it's always April, considering the number of Easter egg hunts we go on. So <laughs> the connection between FNAF Joke? and Custom Night was originally discovered by Reddit user Roxas Lucario, and it ultimately over a year ago. That collects various wow. information from across the various games. For instance, the first time you start up FNAF World, you're presented with an opening cutscene. Something went very wrong, and that's why I. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Calm that down. Awesome. Go to the info page after seeing that creepy opening cutscene, and suddenly the trigger burst is activated, presumably telling the game that you've seen that scene once before, so for all subsequent playthroughs, you don't have to see it again. Correct. That's how these sorts of variables work. But yes. what's weird, though, is that the trigger for this drowned ending and unlocking the trophy is titled beat game four which might just mean it's the fourth ending of fnaf world fine but why then would scott use that exact same variable name in ultimate custom night? is it called beat game four game and it's not like ultimate custom night is the fourth game in the franchise him using that exact same variable name suggests that the connection between the two was very much intentional and that my friends is just scratching the surface scott all, but very very important easter egg starts laying the groundwork for where this series is ultimately headed moving forward oh boy FNAF help AR wanted clearly left off and where the new fnaf AR special delivery delivery oh my god i'm so excited oh yeah didn't you know there's a new fnaf ar game and it's right around the corner yeah there's a trailer for it and everything because my torment is year round and unceasing looks like we're gonna end up playing hide and seek with a bunch of animatronics but more on that one in a minute FNAF yep. world was a game that was largely ignored by us theorists because unfortunately Unfortunately, you won't get tired. Of my voice, you? you won't get tired. Oh. Uh, uh, no. 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 Hey, my podcast, boy Hippo. Meta. The lore, on the whole, was its own self-contained story within this fictional universe. The only times things got truly meta was in FNAF World, which sure helped us predict <laughs> the appearance of Baby and Henry into the mainline games, but it was also the game where Scott Cawthon literally appears as the final boss complaining about how sick he was. And he dies. Insatiable appetite for animatronic dad. We Scott, kill him. You're our mama bird, my friend. Puke that sweet, sweet lore down into my gullet. But you can see why most of us would take this as a joke, right? Scott isn't a character <laughs> in the FNAF universe. So he even confirmed it. Another game for the lols. Except now Scott is a character in the game. I just realized that this episode was written before Scott said that he's not canon. So this entire episode, or at least a good portion of it, might not be be true. Just remember that Scott did make an official statement on Reddit saying that he is not, I repeat, he is not canon. We are not canon, Reddit is not canon, you are not canon. I believe that is very close to his direct quote. As of FNAF VR, it's revealed to us that Scott, since the beginning, has played a critical role in the lore of Oh god, I feel bad for Matt right now. I feel so, so bad for Matt. Of the FNAF universe. We know that Fazbear Entertainment has developed something of a bad reputation over the last few decades and while it's true that some stories associated with our name were loosely based on actual events <laughs> oh boy the majority of them were total fabrications from the mind of a complete hey look it's scott and if that wasn't explicit enough the secret tapes hidden throughout the game make it even matt clearer. i'm so sorry i should check to see if he has anything in the description or comments oh boy Oh, this is bad, boys. Don't have to tell me twice. That rogue indie developer is obviously Scott. That's just where it begins. Because oh. Fnaf World was trying to tell us something else about where this franchise was headed. No. Video games crossing into the real world and vice versa. You see, FNAF World is a lot of things. A lot of things. No. <laughs> Don't do that. Around the aftermath of FNAF 4. <sighs> We're told when we first boot up the game that something has happened out there in the real world. And it's having an effect in... In here, the sanctuary, the world of this particular game. Okay. There, the rest of the game features a main quest that's completely hidden. You could go through this entire game. And Wasn't Matt like one of the first people to find this? Real plot of this thing. The only, only way that you would know about this is by accidentally lingering on the first. <laughs> Something he actually did. In turn, releases glitched 8-bit Fredbear. He's here. 
here. He's there. He's there. He's everywhere. Who are you, who are you gonna, gonna call? Glitch David Fred Bear. <laughs> this in turn. Oh my God. Uh. And it's here that we find our first instance of video game to real life crossover. The See, each clock thing. is a mini game that connects back to FNAF 3 and all the individual steps necessary to unlock the happiest day cutscene. Yay. A good and canonical ending. If you think way back to that game, it always oh. bothered me that punching random blocks on a wall or double clicking a random poster in your real life security office was somehow allowing us to put the spirits of the dead children to rest. But FNAF World Whoa. gave us an explanation even though we ignored it back at the time. FNAF World, the game world, or more accurately, the spirits that are trapped existing in that game's code were able to push out and affect changes IRL through those clock minigames. That's how you get these kind of video gamey moments in what is otherwise a realistic, albeit haunted, setting. Now, why okay. is this important? Why are we talking about it now so many years <laughs> after these games were first released? Well, because it's only starting to matter now. Oh, it's man. Exactly what Scott's we not canon. VR help wanted. That game established sentient code that was looking to escape from its video game prison. It was just junk. Circuit boards and things like that. Look pretty old. Somehow, though, there was... He's not canon, and I, I know the script was written before he said that. What I'm saying here is... Oh, I'm so sorry. ...lore of this series, official lore that is apparently dating back further than we would have expected, computer code is somehow able to store the minds or spirits or whatever of these characters and eventually rebirth them out into the real world if the right steps are taken. See also Petscop. And in FNAF oh VR, boy. we see an Petscop. this happening. William Afton, who was trapped in the circuit boards, was released into the code of this new game, Help Wanted, where he then took the form of Glitch Trap, until finally, through us playing the game and collecting the tapes and putting the pieces back together, was able to escape again. But this time, he was able to escape not just from circuit boards, but out into the real world. Just like he did oh, in Darko's video. <laughs> that FNAF World was trying to tell us years ago. The story that we all didn't take seriously because the final boss was literally an impervious rainbow. Are you yeah. kidding me? Come on! Uh, yeah, the rainbow what? <laughs> Bad memories. <laughs> I'm only just realizing it now, but Help Wanted is actually a cute and really brilliant name. I mean, we all thought it was help in terms of, like, a want ad, right? Help as a video game tester, which is the core premise of the game, but it's also True. help wanted. Glitchtrap wanted. Heck, he needed our help Heck. in order to escape, so well done, Scott. Good name. Just like Pizzeria Simulator riffs on the idea of simulator games, but really it's an empty box waiting as a trap to catch the final animatronics and burn them alive. Or how Sister Location is all about a separate but related robotics business, but also about a key character's sister, maybe? Question mark. Scott's big brain and an ad. Scott, well done. Slow clap. Now, you might be thinking, nice. wow, malicious code people what? in video games? This sounds nothing like the original story that started off this whole franchise. Because it's and not. Yeah, that's entirely the <laughs> point. The old story of Five Nights at Freddy's was, at least in part, a complete lie. They lied to us. They lie to us. Oh, he's not going with the direct quote. To undo the bad PR done by a rogue indie game developer, but that's not true at all. Oh, oh man, I my heart goes out to you right now. Indie games were designed to conceal and make light of what happened. This isn't just an attempt to rebrand. It's an elaborate cover-up. Let me rephrase what we just heard. Scott is one of the bad guys. Based on the lore in Help Wanted, he was hired on by if he was canon to create the FNAF game. Yikes. The spooky ghost stories that exist within them and in turn distract us from the real truth. Distract us away from what Fazbear's goals really were. He was lying to us. If FNAF VR's tapes are to be believed, pretty much everything we know from the first three, at least, but maybe even four, five, heck, six games could all be thrown out as complete fabrications created by Scott Cawthon for Can you imagine? the reason because he was paid off by Fazbear Entertainment. This thing, Glitch Trap, might not even be a recreation of someone named William Afton. Heck, William Afton might not even exist. He's got the gauntlet. He 
mentioned by name at the beginning of FNAF's sister location, and FNAF VR seems to replicate his original crimes pretty darn closely, so I'm gonna assume that some of that is actually true. The long story short here is that FNAF VR, in making Scott Fazbear cover up, is the franchise's way of rebooting the story for the next generation, telling us that with FNAF VR, we're starting an entirely new lore. In disowning Scott's story as lies, it's explicitly telling us that everything we've known up to this point is hopefully Matt Instead, the mentions Scott's post at the end of this generation of Five Nights at Freddy's games is carrying forward the core themes and ideas that were first introduced to us oh, in no. a story of video games code all coming to life and crossing over into the real world this is good now, though if we look back to FNAF world it was trying to tell us the truth about this theme the entire time as 8-bit glitch bear tells us 8-bit glitch bear friend one pulling the strings it's why Scott is technically the final boss he's the poop it master from FNAF 3, it has nothing to do with him at all. It's entirely disconnected from why Scott is there. Again, the indie developer known as Scott Coffin within the FNAF lore is trying to distract us away from the truth of what we should be doing. Pulling my wacky game. And if you think I'm reading too much into this, think again. Scott is trying to clue us back into the importance of FNAF World. As many of you know, Scott has his website, scottgames.com, where Correct. there's always some new teaser image and stuff hidden. Ooh. In the and on there right now is a really cool teaser for the next FNAF game coming out in 20 wrong sorry <laughs> stranger things crossing so this seems like this script or this recording of it is like a week old Matt I'm really sorry <laughs> considering the 1980 era neon themed mall straight out of season three of that show stranger oh, things and FNAF what FNAF world.com world which has been dormant for a really long time yikes month ago. You see, it was updated to have a big old number 58 smack dab in the middle of it. And when you brighten things up because you, you know, should always do up, that. By Scott Coffin, you see a bunch of funny reviews appear for whatever this new game is going to end up being. Now, the number 58 might seem like it's completely random, right? A FNAF 58. Number, FNAF so in space 2. Here, you guessed it. FNAF. World. Yeah. Playable demo for the uh -huh. FNAF game. Ready in space. That game's number, installment number 57. Meaning that Scott's next project, or at least one of his next projects coming out in a few months, is gonna be a Wait, wait, whoa, wait. So he showed the new teaser, which came out around the same time as Scott's post, so I'm guessing did Matt really know about the post and just put out the video anyway? Because if so, that really makes me mad. Project, or at least one of his next projects coming out in a few months is going to be a really mad wacky mini game with lore connections potentially hidden inside of it. In fact, if FNAF 57 Freddy in Space is to be believed, as you play through it in FNAF World, the next installment is going to be if he shows the f in space, which sounds completely Oop dumb, it. but you saw those hidden reviews. They were not super positive about whatever FNAF 58 is shaping up to be. And heck, you don't even have to take it from me. It is coming straight from Scott's own disembodied head floating in a jar from that game. Like I said, FNAF World is weird, and we are still- Wait, but the- the teaser- the Scott Games teaser and the FNAF World teaser showing Freddy with the ray gun and the wolf woman released basically at the same time. So that means he should know about this teaser, and he should- he should include this if he wanted to. Then again, maybe the teaser was added in doing editing? I'm- I don't know. Idea of games and code, digital horrors. What are those titles? Coming more explicit in his other new game that he's working on, the one that we know is releasing this October. AR Special Delivery, an augmented reality title that, based on the trailer and the title, yeah. you have animatronics being dropped off into your house. Sure, the idea of using your phone to see the animatronics roaming around your home might just seem like a fun, quirky new way to play these sorts of games, but from a lore standpoint, you wouldn't be surprised if what this Ah, oh, those teasers, man. ...themes of the new direction for the story of these games. Deadly characters starting off as harmless pieces of code and then escaping out into the real world through your device. This happened with Glitch Trap. By the nature of augmented reality, it's literally happening again in this game. It's kind of creepy. Slice it, the lines between reality and fiction are getting blurrier. And it's Scott and FNAF World of all things that are serving as the bridge <laughs> between those two worlds. It 
all started coming to a head with Snap VR, but starting this October, don't be surprised if this franchise, as we know it, really starts to change. But hey, that's, that's just uh, leaving school on Fridays. Okay. Like, hey, tomorrow's Friday. Okay, first thoughts. Um, it was good. I'm not gonna lie. It was really, really good. If it wasn't for the fact that only a few days ago Scott mentioned in a Reddit post that he's not canon in the franchise, I think this would have been a really, really well put together and, you know, good, good theory. It could have been. It could have been true if Scott and I honestly feel really really bad for Matt right now because it was only a few days ago that he that Scott put out the post so you know the script was most likely already done and guessing um, that one of the teasers was in the, um, in the in the video I'm guessing as they were editing the video Scott made that post and at that point Matt was like oh it's too late now I might as well just throw it out there because who wouldn't want to see another FNAF video, am I right? Again, I do really, really like this. I think it ties in FNAF World really well, because, again, what, 2016? So over three years old, um, coming up on four, because it was released in May, so nearly four years old, like three and a half. I think it ties in FNAF World with the rest of the franchise really, really well. The only problem... Well, actually, no, Scott doesn't interfere with that. Scott interferes with basically everything else. Everything past like the 10 minute mark, which is like half the video, Scott interferes with, and at honestly there's nothing Matt can do about that. The video's out, and he was already working on it before Scott made the post, so technically it's not his fault. Um, I, can't, I can't blame him for that, so I guess that's just bad luck. <laughs> Poor Matt Pat. I, I did really, really like it though. I'm not gonna lie. I really, really liked it. It's just the one thing that makes me it doesn't even make me mad. It's just the fact that I feel really, really bad. I'm not gonna lie. Because <laughs> it came out only a few days before this video came out. Actually, let me see w actually when it came out. Four days ago, Scott made the post saying that he's not in the series, that he's not canon. Which is really, really, really annoying for Matt. He must be so, so mad right now. But other than that, fantastic theory. Honestly. I really enjoyed this one because it did differ from his other theories, but unlike the previous one, it didn't go so far off the path. You know, it connected in some mysteries that we were um, still wondering, and I think he did it very, very well. And again, just a theory, so he gave his best shot at where he thinks the series is going. Unfortunately though, that's already been um, um, debunked, so um, again. Really sorry, Matt Pat. <laughs> Better luck next time, I guess. Again, AR Gamer is coming out this month, so gonna get a new shot pretty soon. Again, I did really, really enjoy it. So if you wanna watch it on your own without me talking over it, link down below. My dogs are barking because they just loved it so much. So, um, again, make sure you go check it out. Really, really sorry, Matt Pat. Hopefully, this video wasn't as bad as the last one. I apologize if the mic is still a little bit weird from last video. Um, I, I have no clue what's happening. I'm really trying to get it fixed, but I can't really find a solution. But I am going to keep looking into it. But anyways, thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.